blah. Hi guys. Told you this week was going to be different. <laughs> so I'm foregoing the usual format this time around because this one requires a little bit more detailed explanation. So, this time around we are making stage blood. On the surface it's actually a very simple recipe. You just take corn syrup, chocolate syrup, and red food coloring. But if you really want to do it right, you gotta pay a little bit more attention because it, largely depending on where on your body you're going to be placing it, it needs to look a little bit different. Okay, for starters, your basic recipe is just going to be uh, a quarter cup of your corn syrup and about mm, 10 or 15 drops of red food dye and then a squirt of chocolate syrup. Now the chocolate syrup is just to make it, you know, opaque so it doesn't just look like, <laughs> like dyed corn syrup. And that is where the difference is going to come in. You're going to want more or less chocolate syrup depending on where you put it on your body. Now, your brain uses up a lot of oxygen, and so the more oxygen is in your blood, the brighter red it becomes. So when you're making head wound blood, you want to use, you know, all of your red food dye and just a little squirt of chocolate. Just enough to make it opaque, but still keep it that bright, candy-ish red. And also, your brain takes up a lot of blood flow. It just cycles through faster. So a cut anywhere on your skull, you know, even if it's just a shallow one, like if you've ever gotten a cut above your eye, it bleeds like crazy. So make it bright red, and when you're applying it, just don't be afraid to just slather it on. And you might be thinking, well, if you're only making a quarter cup of it, don't I need to make more? Uh, 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 uh. It goes a lot further than you think it's going to. Like when you go to, a, you know, you get something from a costume shop, and they'll just give you this little bitty tube of fake blood. That's all you need. It goes a lot further than you imagine it will. So, you know, a quarter cup, maybe a half cup if you're making a lot of wounds on yourself. But that's all you're really going to need. And even if you do need more, then you can just whip up another batch in about 20 seconds. No big deal. <laughs> So, for an injury on your torso or on your limbs, it's the exact opposite concoction as when you're making head wound blood because, you know, it's the exact opposite thing. Your body takes up a lot less oxygen and the blood is flowing slower. So, you want to make it darker, add more chocolate to it, and be a little more sparing when you're putting it on. So here is the AB. From that other angle, you can't see it too well, but that is the difference between head blood and body blood. See that? That's what you want. And finally, oozing blood. <laughs> this is this is the fun one. Now it's you know pretty simple, but if you're gonna you know if you're gonna have it in a bag to be popped at a party and you know inside of a skull or something, or if you want to you know keep it in your mouth for a minute and let it ooze out, then you want you want it to be a little bit thinner so that you're not holding you know just syrup in your mouth for for however long you need it, because that can get kind of nauseating. So, you just take a little bit of hot water to thin it out a little more so it will flow better. The point of this one is that it's a little bit closer to the consistency of actual blood, and if you're wanting to have it, you know, flow out of, you know, again, out of a bag or out of your mouth, that's what you want. You want it to move a little bit more like it's real blood. Now, the whole point of these other two is that they are you know, the, 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 that they're a little stiffer, they are, they stay a little longer, they will, you know, they flow slower and they will, you know, hold to where you put them for a little bit longer. Now with, you know, professionally made, you know, chemically made stage bloods, they have, you know, a bunch of other stuff in them that makes them, you know, that can make them set a little firmer to stay right where you put them for a considerable amount of time. But even, you know, even with those, just, you know, your body heat and perspiration and moisture in the air and just gravity are eventually going to pull it off of where you've marked and make it look like, oh, okay, that's, that's not what's actually happening. But if you don't care too much about that and if you're not going to be out for too long or you know, if, if it's just something you want to see if you can do, just grab some syrup, grab some dye, and put it together. Lagadissa. 
Now comes the fun part. I'm going to show you just some quick tips for how to apply it. Now, if you're uh, if you have just some eyebrow pencils lying around, you can use those. Just, you know, a black and red right on top of each other. And if you don't have eyebrow pencils lying around, you know, you can find black and red face paint all over the place this time of year. Just go to any costume shop, pick up a, you know, a vampire or werewolf kit, and they'll have black and red paints in them somewhere. So just grab those and make a simple line on your head like that. Just take your blood and apply sparingly or liberally depending on where you want it. And if you have extra at the end of the day, you know, you can just <laughs> dump it on yourself to pretend you've been cutting other people up or have it coming out of the side of your head. Just use as you see fit. So just have fun with it. Um, and, if, and if you end up not using it all, you can just drizzle it on some ice cream. <laughs> My life is kind of evil anyway. I don't need to alter it too much. <laughs>